G'day guys, I've got a conditional probability question here for you today which says let us suppose that everyone takes a test for whether or not they have a particular disease which can produce either a positive or negative result. The probability of an individual being infected with this particular disease is 2%. Regardless of whether the individual has the disease, the probability the test will be correct is 95%. So are asked, in a group of 100 people, Approximately how many would return a positive test from this res positive test from positive result from this test, sorry. And if whether a person receives a positive result from the test, find the probability that although the result is positive, they do not in fact have the disease. Okay. So to start with, what I usually do with these sort of questions is I create a tree diagram so I can assign relative probabilities to everything that is required. So what I do is I get a tree diagram. Looks like this. So what I'm going to do from here, guys, is I'm going to assign the probabilities. So here we have someone who has the disease, someone who doesn't have the disease, and here is whether they tested positive or negative. Okay, so the question says that the probability that the person has the disease is 0 0.02. So let's just write that in, 0.02. So Basically, from here, we can also write the probability that they don't have the disease because you it's a binary thing. You either have it or you don't. So the complement of this is 0 0.98. Cool. And it says the probability that the test will be correct is 0.95%. So what we have here, guys, is we have the correct ones where you have the disease and it tests positive and where you don't have the disease and it tests negative. The other two are incorrect. So the probability that we have correct results is 0.95% or 0 0.95. So, so there's a 5% chance the test will be wrong. So the other correct one is down here. And then we have our 5% here and here. Cool. So that's our Venn diagram sort of figured out. And we can use this to figure out what is going on in A and B. So let's start with part A. So it says, in the group of 100 people, approximately how many would return a positive result from this test? Okay, so we're looking for the probability that the test is positive first. Now this is going to equal. The probability that they do have the disease and it tests positive. So probability that you have the disease and you test positive and the probability that you don't have the disease and you test positive. So there are two probabilities there you need to work out. You need to know if you have the disease and you test positive, so this one here, and if you don't have the disease and you test positive, because we're looking for the probability that the test is positive, regardless of what if you have the disease or not. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.02 times 0 0.95. And we're going to add that to 0 0.98 times so this test is going to be wrong, so it's going to be 0 0.05. Cool. And you pop out with a number of 0 0.068. Yeah, which is 6.8%. Now, so basically you can see that the probability of us having the disease is 2%, but the prob probability of us actually returning a positive result is 
0.8%. So you can see there's going to be a lot of times where you get a false positive. So to finish part A, what we finally need to do is work out what the expected amount of people in 100 people. So the expected value of people that have the disease, sorry, of people that test positive, is equal to the probability that they test positive, 6.8% or 0 0.068 times the number of people, which is equal to 6.8 or approximately 7 people. Cool. So, let's see if we can find some space for part B. We'll do part B over here. I'll make it black. Cool, so part B. So a person receives a positive result from the test. Find the probability that the result is positive. Although the result is positive, they do not have the disease. Okay, so this is what we're asked to find here is the probability that they do not have the disease given a positive test result. So, hopefully from your given probabilities, you understand that this is going to be the probability that they don't have the disease and a positive divided by the probability that it's positive. Now, we know the probability that it's positive. It's written right here. And we know the probability that if we don't have the disease and we test positive because that is here. So we have to figure out this number. So let's do that. Just quickly jam it into our calculators. We will get 0 0.049. And if we get this, we can jam it into here. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.049, what we just calculated, divided by the probability of it being positive, which is 0 0.068. And that, my friends, is equal to 0 0.721, or 72.1 percent. Okay, so you can see on that last one, if you get tested, if you test positive, probabilities say, or the chances are, that you're still not going to have the disease. All right, so let's just quickly have a run through of what we did. One of the biggest problems I find with these questions is there's heaps and heaps of information in the writing that you have to try and demystify or decode before you can actually get started on the questions. And a lot of kids don't spend enough time decoding it. They don't fully understand what the question is or where the information lies before they attempt the actual questions which are here and here. So what I would suggest guys is take a bit of extra time figuring out what the hell this means before you head on to this. Why? Because if you just skim this and jump straight into this, you're going to miss out valuable information and it's you're gonna get the question you're not gonna get the question right. But apart from that, these questions is just a practice makes perfect. I say that on all basically all my videos, but it's true. You just got to keep going. You're gonna run into roadblocks, but just keep trying. And yeah, if you want to do me a favor as well guys, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos almost every day on maths and science and all sorts. But um yeah, until next time, guys, enjoy your maths.